fast forward to early this year, we've got a facility up and going and now producing um, a mixed rare earth carbonate, um, which is rich in both magnet and rare earths. Uh, and that's gonna be provided to, we're scaling up the production of our, of our demonstration plant to provide samples for, for offtake and strategic partner discussions. to those tuning in to the Assay TV where we're once again catching up with Tim Harrison, the Managing Director of Ionic Rare Earths. Welcome Tim, great to see you again as always. Hi Katie, nice to be back. So for our new viewers, um, I know you've been on here plenty, but can you give us a brief recap of Ionic Rare Earths as a company? Yeah, so Ionic Rare Earths, we're developing both primary and secondary rare earth supply, uh, specifically magnet and heavy rare earths. We've got a primary supply asset uh, with the Ugandan project, the Makutu Rare Earth Project, um, which is an advanced ionic absorption clay. Um, we've got a mining permit, environmental permits, um, and completed a feasibility study, uh, and now making mixed rare earth carbonate from a demonstration plant in Uganda. Um, and the other aspect of the business is magnet recycling. So secondary magnet rare earths, um, based in the UK, um, we've got our subsidiary there, is Ionic Technologies, um, and right now we've got a magnet recycling demonstration plant that's producing high purity magnet rare earths. Great, and the company has released plenty of news flow recently, so let's start with the announcement regarding the production of mixed rare earth carbonate at the company's demonstration plant, which is on site at Makutu. What's the update there and what's happening? Yeah, so uh, we started building a demonstration plant middle of last year. Um, so. You know, nine months ago, it was a, a sugarcane field. Um, fast forward to early this year, we've got a facility up and going and now producing um, a mixed rare earth carbonate, um, which is rich in both magnet and rare earths. Uh, and that's going to be provided to, we're scaling up the production of our, of our demonstration plant to provide samples for, for offtake and strategic partner discussions. So, uh, yeah, big milestone uh, from the team at, at Makutu. Great. And let's look at your other demonstration plan, because you do have two in Belfast. Um, this is also progressing rapidly to create a sustainable magnet supply chain, um, actually through decommissioned wind turbine batteries, amongst other batteries too. Um, it's quite a unique program that you've got going on there. Can you share some of the details there with our viewers? Yeah, so we take... Um, you know, we've got a, a process um, from – and technologies come out of Queen's University, Belfast, um, so agnostic on magnet quality. Um, and we've started with a, a wind turbine, a seven-tonne wind turbine um, magnet from a generator, uh, but we also take swarf and, and magnets from other applications. We are right now producing high-purity uh, magnet rare earth oxides, um, we've demonstrated high purity products um, and on the back of that, we are aiming towards moving towards, you know, cementing some, some commercial partnerships over, over the near term. So, uh, yeah, big milestone out of Belfast as well. Yeah, excellent. And as you've just mentioned, um, you're looking to establish partnerships. Um, you already have an established supply chain collaboration with Ford Motors. Um, are there any other potential collaborations in the pipeline? Yeah, so beyond the relationship that we've announced with uh, Less Common Metals and, and Ford, we're working on similar uh, potential opportunities with other supply chain partners um, in the rare earth uh, magnet supply chain. So we're discussions now with uh, OEMs and, and operators of, of specific equipment to bring that material back into the supply chain, back into the circular economy supply chain. We're also working with uh, um, magnet manufacturers um, to establish, you know, closed loop uh, capability to um, integrate into into new facilities that are being developed globally. So, uh, yeah, there's a number of things that are that are bubbling away quite nicely there uh, with Ionic Technologies. Absolutely. So let's just circle back a bit there. Um, let's look back at the Makutu project. So the exploration target was recently upgraded by forty percent, which is quite significant. It's already quite large as it is. Can you talk us through this and what this means for the next steps at Makutu? 
Yeah, look, I mean, we, we know Makudu's big. Um, it just got a bit bigger. Um, so there's more than enough there for us to develop, you know, beyond the, the first stage of development of Makutu, but but multiple stages of development so that we can scale out production of both magnet and heavy rare earths uh, for a number of potential customers. So, you know, that increase in the, the exploration target helps us to understand which of those tenements is likely to provide the, the best bang for buck on conversion of potential to, to resource. So we've had a, a lot of information there. I like obviously has hit many milestones recently. So just to summarise for our viewers and investors, what are some of the key highlights they should be looking out for in the coming months? Yeah, look, I mean, we've, we've demonstrated at both demonstration plants the ability for um, both assets to start producing products. So I think on Makutu now, having produced products, uh, we should be in a position in the near term to, to move forward on offtake and, and strategic partnering discussions um, and also start to advance Makutu towards the, the investment decision which we're targeting for later this year. Um, and on the recycling side, with the production um, of magnet rare earths now up and going uh, at, at Makutu, sorry, at uh, Ionic Technologies, um, we have a you know, significant planned work program over the next 18 months with, with Ionic Technologies and a number of groups that are, that are looking to put material through our facility with a view to moving towards commercial partnerships. So we hope, uh, we aim to be able to move that potential towards something we can announce and start to position the, the Ionic Technologies business case you know, the feasibility study, which we aim to have completed middle of, of this year, you know, with a first potential plant in Belfast, but the ability to roll this out across Western Western jurisdictions. So, you know, very much something that we, we see being replicated across a number of markets um, in reasonably quick succession. Excellent. Well, thank you for that, Tim. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on the Assay TV. And I'm sure we'll be hearing from you again very soon, considering the rate at which Ionic is rapidly progressing. Thanks, Katie.